Welcome to the Portraits and Fitness channel. I'm David J. Toman, a portrait and headshot photographer based in the East Bay of the San Francisco Bay Area. I just completed my first week following what is known as the carnivore diet, that is, subsisting entirely on animal products. I'll share more details later in this video, which is really the subject of this video. But first, let me get something out of the way. I'm making this video entirely for myself as a means of setting a benchmark for myself and others to look back on in the future as I progress along an approach to living, aka lifestyle, that I'm excited to embark on. I seek to hold myself accountable for my lifestyle choices, observe any ups and downs, celebrate change and progress, and share any insight I may gather. I'm not interested in viewer numbers or becoming a carnivore influencer or celebrity, like that would ever happen at my age. <laughs> In my sex. But if you'd like to see how the story develops, I'll be making a weekly update. So like and subscribe or not. I wanted to get this out as soon as possible in order to document my current state of health, mental and physical fitness, and various particular details. It's going to be a one take or bust. So here we go. Based on the initial results and my investigation into the subject, I'm quite certain I'll be able to sustain this way of life and continue making progress. I turned 57 years old last month, and I've been in generally good health. Compared to the average 57-year-old American, I'd probably be considered in excellent health. I've never been prescribed or taken medications for anything but acute pain, and I have been generally able to do most physical tasks that I set out to do. But I wasn't feeling as good as I know I can, and making the most of my life, and I wanted to do something about it. Up until late last year, I was literally held back by lower back pain that first struck me on New Year's Day 2015. At the time, at the age of 47 going on 48, I'd come off of 16 years straight as an active athlete, competing in triathlons and other endurance events, and completing six full-length Ironmans, a ton of Olympic distance and half Ironman races, multiple marathons, and several ultra marathons. It was early in the year, and I was getting excited about my running fitness and starting to think about what marathon I could sign up for so I could make an attempt at going under three hours for the first time in 30 years. If I could only appreciate having gone under three years at the age of 17. Anyway, and the seemingly sudden back pain threw a wrench into those plans. I say seemingly because it could be the result of something that existed longer in my life, but it flared up at that time. I relocated from my adopted home of Taiwan to the Bay Area in the summer of 2016. And between that time and 2023, I only became increasingly dissatisfied with my physical condition and frustrated with my limited physical activity due to lingering back pain. I also gained a significant amount of weight and found myself referring to my past active life as 50 pounds ago. The thought of the active version of myself forever delegated to the past haunted me, and the lighthearted nature of that quip about my weight gain wasn't funny anymore. Other than the weight gain, the most annoying aspects of my physical deterioration have been loud snoring at night, or any time I fall asleep watching TV or even in front of my computer screen. Yeah, sometimes that happens as well as rosacea on both sides of my nose, my cheeks, and middle forehead, which I'm sure you can see here, and maybe I'll zoom in, although that's pretty unpleasant for me. So in April 2023, I set out to do something about my weight and my health in pursuit of a fitness and activity level that would prepare me to participate in any activity of my choice, like hiking, paddling, cycling, or running. I really wasn't out to regain my competitive athlete life or, or really compete in any kind of events, um, at least for the foreseeable future. Maybe that's a road we'll get to at some point. But activity is really the goal and always has been. So with help of a local chiropractor and a lot of effort to address the muscle imbalance that we concluded directly contributed to the back pain, I was able to work out at the gym regularly instead of aiming to lose weight by running outdoors or on a treadmill or elliptical machine. I embarked on weight training for the first time since high school in November 2023, just in time for the holidays and assorted interruptions. 
Slowly but surely, I've seen results, with significant gains in strength of around 40% in most exercises, diminished to no back pain, yay, and the loss of around a dozen pounds. No, check that. As of today, it's 15 pounds. So now the former David is a little less than 40 pounds ago. More like 35 pounds ago. I still snore. I have rosacea and I'm still too heavy to enjoy running. I wanted to do something about all of that as well. And today marks the end of my first full week on what is known as the carnivore diet. For those unfamiliar with this approach to diet and lifestyle, this means that I have only consumed animal products over this time, such as beef, lamb, chicken, eggs, bacon, butter, ghee, pork rind, beef liver, and small portions of raw <laughs> and small portions of raw cow's milk. I'm not sure how I feel about continued consumption of dairy products like milk, cheese, and kefir, but there's a gallon of delicious raw milk in my fridge in my fridge right now, and I'm not letting it go to waste. At this time, I don't care because in important sense, at this time I don't care because in an important sense, this approach is like an elimination diet. By only consuming meat and some dairy, Consumption of sugar in any other form than the galactose in milk, gluten, starch, and alcohol is completely eliminated. So I will evaluate how everything's working from week to week. And at some point I may stop buying and drinking raw milk and other dairy products, but that time has not come yet. So after a full week, what's going on? I've already noticed various results. First, the rosacea has not flared up to any significant degree. And what remains is simply recent flare-ups that are healing. I had one day of keto flu, which was unpleasant but brief. I won't belabor that point here. You can look that up if you don't know what keto flu is. And interestingly, the way I experience hunger has changed. I'd say that the best way to describe it is either I'm hungry or I'm not. There's no gray area in between feeling where I'm drawn to snacking or various cravings. After a good dinner one night, I also experienced no hunger the following day, even after a tough morning gym workout until the next evening. So I just didn't eat all day until dinner. I've never been too fixated on food, but it really feels like I've started so-called eating to live rather than living to eat. Sorry, foodies. I've continued to drink one cup of black coffee, as we say in New York, as has been my habit for nearly 40 years but I'm not experiencing it in the same way as before. While I would previously either wake up or come back from the gym eagerly anticipating that big mug of Joe, it feels more like an old habit and less of an enjoyment as before, much to my surprise and admitted dismay, actually. Today, I made a thermos of coffee and forgot to drink it for several hours, making it an afterthought. And again, it wasn't much of a pleasure when I finally consumed it, and let me tell you, I brew a fabulous mug of rich, aromatic coffee with my AeroPress. So while I'm not putting pressure on myself to kick the morning Joe habit, I could see dropping it if it's no longer as enjoyable. And I'm sure my gut and sleep patterns will benefit if I do. I haven't weighed myself on a daily basis until today, but I can tell that my body composition or lean muscle to fat ratio has already improved. I've taken some mirror selfies since about six months ago, six months ago when I began weight training, which I might never share. But if I should, by some miracle, end up ripped with a six pack, I guess the embarrassment of sharing the before photos might be lessened. We'll see. Physically, as well as mentally, I have excellent energy throughout the day with no significant peaks and valleys and no brain fog, really. None at all. It's amazing. Last night, in fact, I was almost too alert and awake, so I stayed up later than usual just reading. These are just initial observations after a week of consuming only animal products. I look forward to making updates on my progress to share here and hopefully hosting a more experienced carnivore as a guest on my Portraits in Fitness Photography and Podcast Project. So speaking of that, if you or someone you know are an active person in middle age or older and live within 
close proximity to my home base near Oakland, California, I'm looking for such a guest to feature in my photography portrait and podcast project. You can find the project at www.portraitsandfitness.com and tune into the podcast on all major podcasting platforms. I'm also on Substack and will likely be posting with updates on my carnivore journey there as well. To anyone wondering how long I'm going to be on this diet, it reminds me of a similar question my mother asked me shortly after I completed my first Ironman race, way back in 1999, by the way. She said, so when are you going to be done with it or something to that effect? My answer to her then about triathlon and its place in my life is the same as my answer now about eating as a carnivore. I told her that having proven to myself that I could finish an Ironman and successfully integrate the training into my life, it was no longer an obsession for me or something I dwelled on. Rather, it was simply something, granted a big part, that I just do. And I go into this carnivore journey with the same attitude. Yes, I currently read a lot, watch a lot of carnivore videos. Shout out to Steak and Butter Gal especially. But I'm sure that before long, it will just be part of the way I live. So yeah, if it continues to work for me, why would I stop? Why would I eat sugar, drink alcohol, or scarf down a pizza if it doesn't feel good any longer? I'll conclude with one last thought, and it's probably the most important one. That is, knowing that my sustenance and health relies on the lives and deaths of other sentient animals, my gratitude for our divine creator's bounties has only grown. It's not a new thing in me, but it has especially deepened in recent weeks and months, and it's an important part of my spiritual journey. I take each meal with deep gratitude, which extends to myriad aspects of my life. So until next week's update, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. What? You thought the video was over? Future David here with a super quick addendum in preview. So it's a day later and I wanted to share some exciting news and give a preview of what I'll be reporting on in my next week update. So last night I was texting my best friend who lives in Taiwan and he had just gone out for a 5K run two days after he had finished a triathlon. Well, I was really impressed that he was back on the horse, especially since he really hadn't trained for the triathlon, which he completed comfortably. He does a lot of walking. So I found myself writing him, I'm in the midst of slimming down and feel the urge to go running, percolating up in me. Have been fast walking slash jogging on the treadmill a couple of times a week for now. And then this morning we picked up the conversation again because there's a 15 hour time difference. <laughs> And I found myself thinking that I didn't have enough time to hit the gym before heading out to a video shoot. So I'd have to find a time in the afternoon. Or I could go for a run. It would only be a half hour. That's all I promised myself. So I texted him, you know what, matey? I was going to hit the gym this morning, but I think I'm going to attempt a 5K jog instead. Wish me luck. So I did. It wasn't super comfortable or fast, but I did it. It hurt. I felt like a total newbie, shin splints and all, but I know that it can only get better. I've been going to the gym with my wife nearly every morning doing upper and lower body weight training and spending a little time on the dread mill. And now that I've managed to cover 5K all at once, I think I'm going to prefer to do two or three weight sessions at the gym each week and run or really jog the other days with one day off. So that gives me one more jog or run this week and at least one more jog run next week before my next update. And this would never have been possible without the carnivore lifestyle change that I've been making. Thanks to which I already look and feel lighter. In previous attempts to run, I could feel myself dragging that extra weight. I, and every time I passed the window, I'd look or and it was like this horrific vision that I saw, you know, with my gut hanging out. <laughs> so, uh, but on this jog, my main limitation was really muscular endurance. My heart rate was high, but I'm sure it will settle down nicely very quickly as I progress. So next week's update will include some descriptions of how things are going in my strength training and running, and of course, the dietary changes 
as I continue on my carnivore journey. So see you then. Be sure to comment if anything resonates with you. Thanks a lot.